So several years, several years ago, Sarasota author and editor Liz Corson realized her county's library system was throwing away perfectly good books. A lot of good books. And so after trying and failing to convince his leadership to allow her to distribute these books, she partnered with other counties and private individuals and has, to date has given away more than 15,000 books to homeless and needy people in her community. An enthusiastic reader and lifelong advocate for literacy, Liz is here to talk to us about right, right, right now. Say that 10 times fast. Right, right, right now. So ladies and gentlemen, help me give a warm welcome to Liz Corson. is that one of the pivotal points of my book giveaway to homeless people in my Sarasota, Florida community was one day I was in a dumpster and I had figured out the dumpster routes of all the libraries in the county and I would go there the day before the dumpsters were empty and I'd climb right in and I'd start looking for the books that I was going to save, rescue, and give away. And I tried to be subtle about it. I tried to do it sort of off hours, but one day, right during the middle of the day, I found myself in a dumpster at the main library in downtown Sarasota, Florida. And the security guard came over to me. He said, listen, he said, the next time you are in a dumpster, we're going to have you arrested for trespass. And I said, you know, I can't imagine a bigger public relations nightmare for the county library system than you arresting a middle-aged lady who feels compelled to jump in your dumpsters and rescue discarded books. And so I said, this is the end of this problem. I called the only person I know who could help me, which is the publisher of the Sarasota Herald Tribune. And I said, I've got to tell you that the library is throwing away books. And he said, I'm on it. I'm sending a recorder. And so he, he came over with this recorder. And I had 17 boxes of children's biographies, mostly of African American leaders. So imagine probably, I think, I think the count was 447 of these children's biographies of Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, luminaries like that. And these had been thrown away. They had been in a dumpster in my county. And once the article hit the paper, I'm glad to say that the library stopped throwing away books. But did they give them to me? No. Now all the books are apparently sent off to some place in Indiana where I guess they're resold. And so there was no leadership about that particular issue in my county. One of the ways you can really demonstrate leadership is by your good writing. Your good writing demonstrates authority and credibility. And I'm going to show you today how to make $250. Now, who among us would like to have an extra $250? See, some people don't really care, but I know that I would like to have an extra $250, but I'm going to do it better than just $250. I'm not talking about $250. I'm not talking about $250 a month. I'm not talking about $250 a week, a day, or an hour. I'm not even talking about $250 a minute. Today, I'm going to show you how to make $250 a second. Now, who among us wouldn't like to make $250 a second? That's what I'm, well, there's somebody who says, yes, absolutely. And I myself would like to make $250 a second. And that's one of the things I'm going to show you this morning. Now, let me get this, all these things to juggle. Different 
publishers who have said this is the way to use a semicolon, this is the way to use a comma, this is the difference between a, punch, a, a hyphen and a dash. But I have combined the three authorities, the New York Times, Chicago, and believe it or not, Princeton University. And I have come up with a style that I call modern American academic style. It is unassailable. If you use the style that I have blended from these three authorities, you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the grammar geek in your office. You can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any grammar geeks that you have as clients. Because the rules I'm going to share this morning are absolutely non-negotiable. And it's going to be a fast workshop. I want you all to think about Serena Williams, the tennis star. I want you to think about fundamentals. In Serena's case, the fundamentals are tennis. I guarantee you that the minute Serena Williams first stepped on the court, she did not care and did not question about the width of the court, the height of the net, the length of the racket, or the size of the balls. Because she was there to play tennis. Today, we are going to be talking about fundamental rules of American English that are non-negotiable. So I will entertain every question that you have, except for one. And that question is why? Why? Who knows why? Who cares why? Because this is just like playing tennis. So just relax, sit back, and come with me on a grammar exploration. We are going to take a quiz but as we are going to take is the green sheet. It is marked quiz 21 sentence quiz number one. It is designed to ferret out what you know, what you don't know, and perhaps most importantly, that mushy little ground of things that you're not sure about. Because it's my expectation that when you walk out this door this morning, you will know. You will know for sure. I want you to recognize these basic principles, and I'm also hoping at the end of this workshop, you will think like an editor, because that's really my goal here. This stuff is easy. This stuff is basic. This stuff should take you about three minutes to go through this sheet. It's all easy. It's all obvious. And I don't want you to linger on anything because there's nothing tricky about this quiz. Absolutely nothing. So I want you to go through this. I'm going to ask for three minutes. I actually give myself three minutes. Starting right now. Come to a place where you're not sure, just circle it, underline it. Because this is all stuff that we all should have learned in eighth grade, but sadly, many of us did not.
more seconds. That's a nod. Yes, I see some hands. 30 more seconds. There we go. didn't say is I've published 10 books about American English punctuation and grammar best practices. So I can answer any questions, but boy, if you ask me any questions that aren't about tennis, we can take it out in the hall afterwards because we have got a very specific agenda, one of those proverbial long way to go, and not a lot, a lot of time to get there. So let's get started with sentence number one. You'll notice that there is sort of a theme to these questions or these sentences. And yes, they all are WordPress developer website sentences. It's unfortunately so simple to go on a WordPress developer site and pick out a lot of mistakes. So here we go. I've been working with WordPress since its inception. Number one mistake in American English is IT apostrophe S versus ITS. I make this mistake all the time, and I have to slow myself down when I get to ITS versus IT apostrophe S. IT apostrophe S is the contraction of it is or it has. It's counterintuitive in American English, which is why you have to go slow, because you automatically, when you do a possessive of it, you put that apostrophe in there. You've got to watch yourself. You've got to watch yourself. Now, fortunately, if you do spell check and word, it is a blue line. So watch those blue lines, but watch yourself, because this is a huge mistake. It's a beginner mistake, and it should not be made by anybody at this level. Number two, in American English, I want to focus on this a little bit, because we seem to have fallen into error. In American English, the noun drives the bus. A singular noun needs a singular verb form, needs a singular pronoun. Now, it's true, in Britain, people who write in British English they have fallen by the wayside. But last time I looked, they drive on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> so let's be careful that we are writing an American English for an American audience. So sentence number two, if the person, singular person, singular person, is not enthused about what they are doing, <laughs> no, it's he or she. Remember in the 60s, if you weren't here, let me tell you, in the 60s, women went into the workforce in droves. It used to be that you could assume that when you had a profession that was mentioned in a sentence, particularly a doctor or a lawyer, it was a he. But then all of a sudden, women came into the workforce. And you can't say they. You cannot pair a plural pronoun with a singular noun. Yes, sir. So what's your position on the current controversy between they as the neuter then? Well, I think I'm going to make, I'm making my position pretty clear because I do not feel like you have a, you don't, you don't have a workaround. There are plenty of workarounds to this issue. And there's so few times that a newspaper would want to try to use they. This is, this is a really in the weeds question and it is a controversy and I'll just tell you, this is my position. Singular noun, singular pronoun, that's it, that's all. That's it, that's all. Yes, ma'am. I've seen that in technical writing. If you're doing technical writing, I guess I might give you a pass. But if you're writing content on the internet that's made for the masses, I would definitely want to see he or she. Now, however, here we have if the person is not enthused. Okay, so how about if people are not enthused? How easy is that? That's easy. That workaround is easy. So it's not as though we don't have options to make this work in American English. So we have. We have, if the person is not enthused about what they are doing wrong, it will come through in their content. So we have two pronouns in this sentence that are both wrong. I would personally pluralize pe per per person here because I'd hate to see a sentence that said his or her, him or he or she in the same sentence. That would really be absolute overload. So that's easy, that workaround is so simple. So we have, a, we have several sentences about this. Google, Google, last time I looked, 
Google is a company? It cannot be a they. I don't care what the Supreme Court says. A company is it. And that's all there is. So when Google changes its search algorithms, the rest of the sentence is fine. But Google is not a they. It is not a them. It is not a plural noun. Now here we get into some weeds here, so follow me. There is an exception to this rule. Actually, it's sort of a, not really an exception, it's a kind of a different thing. They're called collective nouns. You are an audience. But audience is treated as a singular noun, a singular noun. So let's look at four and five. Our team, our team, team is singular. Now, you don't have to worry about what follows team because you've led the team. That is your noun. Our team provides. Our team provides. They do not provide. Our team provides web analytics. Five, this will help us provide our audience with the focus of each presentation so they. Now, this is dicey. It's really hard to in my opinion, it's sort of disrespectful too, to call a group of people an it, which is technically correct. So what I would say is this will help us provide our audience members. Members is plural, no problem there. Also, you could use listeners, participants. We have workarounds. We have workarounds here, but audience, team, staff are all collective nouns. Oops, I'm not keeping, am I keeping up? There we go, collective noun. And I have, I have some listed up here, team, audience, room, staff, clergy, and committee. So these are collective nouns. Watch out for them, because they will trip you up. Number six. I have another comment on that. Oh. I, doesn't this take a direct, doesn't it take an object? This what? No, it, it's, it's actually assumed, because it was in the, in the previous sentence, so I apologize. I could not have that previous sentence in there. So whatever this is has been discussed and clarified in the previous sentence. Now, I do a two-hour workshop about the proper use of commas. So don't get me started about commas. But there is one mistake I see content writers make all the time I thought was worthy of a very brief discussion here. Very brief. Number six, Susan has been, oh, and by the way, I've changed all the names, so please don't Google these sentences and think you're going to come up with Susan in Huntsville, because you won't. They're all changed. They're all changed. I want to talk, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I'm trying to actually just educate. Susan has been a web developer since 2005 and lives in Huntsville, Alabama, where she is a co-organizer of WordCamp Huntsville. Got to have a comma after Alabama. Got to. Got to, got to, got to. That's in the middle of the sentence. It needs a comma. If it's the end, it needs a period. But you can't have a, the name of a city and the corresponding state without that state having a comma as well. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Would you want to the G after and? The, um, and the uh, no, because uh, where is your conjunction? And you're just repeating Susan with the she. So I would, I would just do the Alabama comma where she is the co -organizer. Susan, after Susan? After 2005 comma and then she Uh, no. 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 All you need is that one comma after Alabama and you're good. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, yeah, you can make it. This is why I do a two-hour workshop about commas. Because you can have, actually, of all the punctuation marks in American English, you can have a conversation about commas. I'm not trying to have, just have a conversation about anything here, because I'm telling you what, this is, yes, ma'am. Um, if you just have two thoughts linked with a conjunction, if you if you change if you change subjects, you definitely need to have a comma plus conjunction or a semi uh, semicolon. But I will again. This is this is a place where we can have a conversation. We can have a discussion about commas. But the only comma that I would put in there and require as an editor is the comma after Alabama. The rest of it doesn't bother me. Okay. Okay. Number seven. This is a. This is a real common mistake. I saw it actually this morning. Seven, don't drive traffic to your website if it's not set up. Set up. Set up 
in this situation as one word is a noun. We need the verb phrase, set up. There we go. So that's the problem with number seven. Anybody seeing a theme here about our sentences? Because remember, we're looking for correct sentences. We're not going to find any. So keep, keep going. Number eight. This is the number one misspelled word in the Sarasota Multiple Listing Service. And I wouldn't have any doubt. It's probably close to the top in the Seattle MLS as well. The color scheme complemented the logo. Oops. This is the wrong version of complemented. Complemented is a homonym. There's one with an I in the middle, and there's one with an E in the middle. I'm going to give you a trick to remember the two, because this is what the way I have to remember myself. Complement with an I. I compliment you. I say something nice about you. Or the second way to use compliment with an I in the middle is I'm by lunch. Your lunch is complimentary. Now, the other compliment that we needed in the sentence to make the sentence correct is the compliment with the E in the middle. And here's how to remember that. To compliment with an E in the middle is to mean complete. To complete. So complete ends with an E. You have to have these little tricks. I, I lean on them all the time. Number nine, word camps are locally organized conferences. Never, ever, 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 ever hyphenate an L-Y adverb. Look to see if your adverb has an L-Y. If it does, do not hyphenate it. That is a real common mistake. Oops, go. Number 10. Oh, but it's awesome to combine technology and style. Since when is technology or style a proper noun? No, stop this, stop this. And can we please stop saying awesome every third word? <laughs> there, there are really very few things that are actually awesome. I, I can only really think of two, God and Mother Nature. Nothing else. So to try, to, try to start to mitigate your use of, use of awesome, because I'm, I'm over it. But technology and style, style certainly are not proper nouns. They do need to be lowercase. But some things need to be capitalized that aren't. Number 11, using correct posture while doing Pilates, exer Pilates exercises improves safety. Well, Pilates actually happens to be a real person, Mr. Pilates. And so if you write that it's lowercase, that's not correct. Same thing with dumpster. Same thing with Xerox. Things, same thing with, believe it or not, some of you people who are about my age, Rolodex, proper nouns. So never assume, always look things up so you're accurate and you're correct. Number 12, number 13. Wow, quotation marks. Everybody's all over the board about quotation marks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set everybody straight, at least you all here in the room. OK, in American English, in American English, quotation marks are always, always placed outside periods and commas. There are no exceptions to this rule. If you think you found one, you have not. You have not. There are no exceptions to this rule. So quotation marks, outside, periods, and commas. The placing of quotation marks with semicolons and colons, always those marks of punctuation go outside the quotation marks. And if you come to an exclamation point or a question mark, the placement depends on the context of the sentence. So you have to really think about those. But here, you don't have to think about anything. Quotation marks, single and double. Now, at WordPress Portland, somebody asked me this question, so I'm going to quickly, I'm not trying to go off the rails here, but I'm going to say that you always lead in American English with double quotes. British people lead with single quotes. That's one of the ways you can really tell who's writing in British English. But here, we are writing for an American market, double quotes. If you need to have a quote inside your quotation marks, single quotes. Because all punctuation and grammar is, is you're trying to communicate with your reader. You want your reader, in this case, to know who's talking and when they stop talking and start quoting somebody else. So double quotes you lead with always. And anything quoted inside those double quotes, single quotes. Single quotes. So these are wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. The 12, 
the quotation mark should be outside that period after company. And 13, impossible layouts, that quotation mark should be outside that comma. And then the other thing I want to say, oh, I'm sure many people here have heard of Grammarly. Grammarly. I have a bone to pick with Grammarly if Grammarly's listening. <laughs> On the Grammarly website, Grammarly says that quotation marks always come in pairs. And hey, on the surface, it kind of sounds like, yeah, they have to come in pairs, don't they? Of course. No, not at all. Take out any fiction novel that you might have still sitting on your shelves. Take a look at your fiction novel and watch what happens when a character speaks into a second paragraph. Because when you have a character who speaks into a second paragraph, you do not end quote at the end of that first paragraph. Because you, again, you're trying to communicate with your readers. You want your readers to know that that same person is speaking and continues to speak and will continue to speak until you put those end quotes on. So, Grammarly, if you're listening, you need to change your website because that is incorrect. Quotation marks do not always come in pairs. Okay, so, so far, we're batting zero with our correct sentence. We have not found one yet. I want to tell you a little bit about telling time. Number 14. Here's the problem with the sentence. There are two ways to tell time correctly, or express time correctly in American English. You can either use lowercase a and p.m. and periods, or you can use capital a and p.m. no periods. Those are the rules. Always have a space between your number and the a.m. period, the a.m. p.m. I also take off the colon and the two zeros at the top of the hour. So I'll say four space a.m. p.m. If it's 4.30, of course, you can't do that. But I like my text to look really clean. And I, don't, I, I don't like anything in my text that's extraneous. So those are the rules about a.m. p.m. So this one's wrong, 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 wrong. Now I'm going to tell you a little easy way to tell whether you need to use quotation marks or italics. I think I made this rule up because I Googled it the other day, didn't find anybody else, and I think I can take credit. I call it the rule of pie. So everybody imagine your favorite flavor of pie. There's a pie. Key lime pie with a graham cracker crust is my favorite. So I'm imagining the kind of sickly green of the key lime. Anything that can be sliced in the larger pie is put into quotation marks. The pie itself is put into italics. So, I really enjoy reading that New York Times article. New York Times is the pie, the article is the piece, and then, so the article title would have quotation marks. New York Times in italics, article name in quotation marks. My favorite song on Joni Mitchell's album, Court and Spark, album is the pie because it can be sliced. My favorite song on Joni Mitchell's album, Court and Spark, is Court and Spark, quotation marks. So you just told your audience that the album title is Court and Spark, but there's a song on the album called Court and Spark. So the pie is in italics, and the pieces are in quotation marks. The rule of pie, ladies and gentlemen. So here, <laughs> here's somebody who says, he is the author of the international bestseller quote, How I Fixed the Internet. I find that people who don't know the rules generally have egos the size of the moon. 16. I need to hire more people, e.g., a designer, receptionist, and an account. E.g. and I.E. always have periods, and they always are followed by a comma. Always. I've noticed that British English people are pulling away from this rule, but again, this is America. We are talking about American English. So 16 needed a comma after EG. 17, look stuff up. You've got to look stuff up. I, I have to look stuff up all the time. And I'm surprised I don't get more pop-ups about cancer and things like that because I'm looking up things for my clients. And a lot of them are sickly type people, and I have to look at all these technical things about various types of cancer. So if I ever got a question about any insurance with a pre-existing condition, <laughs> and they ever looked at my, my browsing history, I'd probably be in trouble. 
But anyway, Wi-Fi, right now, the rule about Wi-Fi is capital W, I, lowercase I, hyphen, capital F, lowercase I. That is the way Wi-Fi is expressed at this moment in time. 18, I saw this on a WordPress site. WordPress, capital W, O-R-D, capital P, R-E-S-S. That to me is a mistake. And WordPress is very plain about how it wants to corporately be expressed in writing. 19. These, and 19 and 20 are stupid, stupid mistakes that somebody would just look at their material before they print or publish. These mistakes would have been found. If you don't see any times that works for you, so obviously works should be work. That's a big mistake. We are actively seeking those interesting in being a high level, or not just an annual volunteer, a high level volunteer at WordCamp. You notice I put ABC. I'm actually applying to speak at that WordCamp, uh, Word and I don't want to. I don't want to irritate anybody. But yes, that is right on the internet right now. That sentence with the identifying WordCamp on it. All right. So now we're down to 20. I promised you that I would. Hopefully, not only educate your eye for mistakes, but also help you think like an editor. So let's think like an editor. This was advertised as a 21 sentence quiz. But gee, I only see 20 sentences. Where is the 21st sentence? Who knows? <laughs> On page two. <laughs> Thank you, that was good. That's a good one. No, it's the instructions. Nobody read the instructions. Let's all read the instructions together. Put, check mark. Oops. One of the toughest things to spot when you're editing content is the dreaded missing word. Oh my gosh. So put a check mark next to all correct sentences. That is the 21st sentence in this 21 sentence quiz. None of these sentences are correct, but there's more. But wait, if you are looking at this carefully and looking at this as a piece, as a piece of work product, there are two types of fonts in this quiz. We have book and old style, which is my favorite font, and then we have some other font, a number four, I can't remember the name of that, but anyway, it's different. So I would ding somebody if this was a piece of work product by what looks like to me a mistake in using two kinds of fonts. It doesn't look deliberate to me. It looks like a mistake. But there's one more thing. One more thing. Now I'm going to hazard a guess that you'd like to say anything but the formatting. The format is my mistake. Now don't look at the formatting. That's space after 10 through 20. That's my fault. There's something else in this quiz that's wrong, 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 wrong. Anybody want to hazard a guess about what it is? Big, uh oh, no, no, it's not about the writing. Because remember, these are real sentences, so we're not we're not hacking up these sentences here because this is this is about punctuation and grammar. All right. Yes, Nia. The indent. Now the indent, as you know, that's my fault. No, we're going to give me a pass on that. Sorry. Yes. No, no, it's not about spacing. It's about it's about punctuation and grammar. It's about yes. Capitalization of the website. No, no, no. All right, all right. <laughs> no, no, you're not. You're not at all. This is this is what I mean by this is this is the kind of thing I look at. This is what you need to look at when you're an editor. Yes, I'm gonna take one more. What, if you say put a check mark, wouldn't that be a singular check mark versus uh, each, you added the word each correct sentence. Well, um, that's not it. So we can talk afterwards. Okay. <laughs> yes, one more. No, 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 no. No, okay, listen, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to give it to you. I'm going to have to give it to you because I'm talking about this is a major mistake. Major, 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 like, major mistake. There are two kinds. <laughs> There are two kinds of quotation marks in this piece. They're directional and non-directional quotation marks. Take a look at, at 12 and 13. See that? And that's a major mistake.
mistake, everybody. You've got to use the same kind of quotation marks throughout your content. It must be. It must be. It, it, gets, it gets pretty geeky. It absolutely does. But once you see these things, once you really see them and you know it and you own it, you can't unsee it. You just can't. So everyone has a pink sheet, which is the second quiz. And I, I think because of time constraints, I'm going to suggest that you take that. And if you'd like to do it after the session, I would suggest it. Because studies have shown that people who actually reinforce new learning immediately upon the new learning process retain the new learning 87% longer when you are quizzed again. So that pink sheet has nothing that we didn't cover on this green sheet, except I did mix it up. I tried to clump stuff together in the green sheet to make it easier to explain. So, and there might be a sentence or two on the pink sheet that has more than one mistake in it. But everything on the pink sheet we just covered this morning. I promised I would tell you how to make $250 a second. So imagine me in Sarasota, Florida in a couple weeks time, right around Thanksgiving. I am having my Honda Fit wrapped. So I'm going to be buzzing around Sarasota. I mean, everybody needs an editor. Everybody needs an editor. And I'm going to help people find me. So I'm going to have my car wrapped. This is an early draft of what it might look like. Things have changed enormously since then. But I took three bids. Because we all know that we are not the only game in town. I took three bids. So I looked at these and I thought, oh, that's really nice. I'm really psyched. I can just imagine myself driving to church, parking in my car, having lots of business as I walk out. But you know, this is a problem. One of my taglines reads, because everyone needs an editor. So how impressed do you think I am with this company's work product when they bobble my tagline? They misspell need. And I looked at it and I thought, wow, this is, this is a joke. It's got to be a joke. It's got to be something I'm supposed to laugh at. And then I thought, well, maybe I could take the joke a little bit further and cross out need and say needs. And I, I entertained that notion for maybe about two seconds. Because I thought to myself, you know something, Liz, at some point, the buck has to stop. And it's going to stop with me. So I don't want anybody to have any kind of inkling that the editor might need an editor. Now, these people did front, back, and both sides. How long would you think it would take one person, two eyeballs, to look over this work product before shipping it to me? It's a $2,000 job. I calculate about eight seconds. So this company didn't make $2,000 because the representative did not spend eight seconds reviewing the work that they were sending to me. And because of that, they lost my business. We are in a huge competitive market. I don't know how many web developers and designers. They are just, they are just in Metro Sarasota, but I bet the woods are full of them. So we have competition, and it really makes sense for us to take those eight seconds, look over our work before it is sent to our clients, and even after it's published, take a look at your work. Here are so many people who are telling us to hurry up, get things done, push it out. But I tell you that in this space, in this writing space, in this editing space, you can achieve perfection. Because perfection is the standard. There is no excuse for typos and mistakes on internet content. No excuse at all. So I want you all to drag your heels. 
drag your eyeballs across your content and make sure that whatever you're putting out as professional work product is perfect. Because this is a space where you can be perfect, and I guarantee you that perfect is a good place to be. Now, how much time do we have for Q&A? Do we have any time? Ten minutes? No way! No. Kira, I must have been talking really fast. Well, I know, but there's no way we have enough time to do that. I can tell you right now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I, I, okay. I have I have a very I have a very significant opinion, which I will share, about directional quotation marks versus non-directional, which is what I call them. So curly versus straight. So directional, non-directional. I like a curly quote in a novel. I think it is attractive to the eye. I like non-directional in internet content because I'll tell you what I, I edit a lot of novels. And it is so, uh, it just makes you feel like slitting your wrist if you have a, an author who's gone through at different times and done directional and non-directional, because they all have to be the same. And the problem is that a search will not reveal all these quotes, because the search engine, is, the search engine in, your, in your word processor is reading them the same. So you will have to go through physically quotation mark after quotation mark, and I'm telling you what, in a 400 page novel, holy moly, I'm not charging enough to do that. So I like a non-directional in internet content, but there's something so charming about directional quotation marks in novels. So that's my opinion about that. Well, it's easy to put those in. I mean, if you insert most programs, will allow you to because I don't have that kind of program. My program doesn't do that. It makes me do it by myself. So I'd love to, I'd love to chat and we'll figure out some technology that I need to know about. Thank you. Okay, yes? Just a quick tip. If you take that content, drop it in Notepad in Windows, and take it back out and have all straight books. And, and a lot of times that will work. If you're working with a novel, though, it, and, and most of the time, a lot of times, my, my people have come to me with the both kinds, and it is a you-know-what to try to go through and, and figure it out. But this lady's going to help me, so I'm hoping that I never have that problem after visiting Seattle. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, in the house. Uh, the number, back to number three, I oh my gosh. noticed it because of there was it, but is it still a rule to spell out every number under 20? Yeah, I like that rule, and actually, I, I actually do spelling out of every rule, every number to 10. I do 10, that's my cutoff. So I didn't really, I, you know, it didn't really bother me, so not bother me enough to even talk about it. There was so much else in this content that bothered me that I couldn't even see this. Okay. You know, I had to hierarchy, hierarch, I had to put them in a hierarchy. There we go. <laughs> yes, hi. hi. When do we use IE versus EG? Okay, IE um, and EG are completely different. Okay, so EG, this is how I remember the two. E is the first letter of for example, example. So EG means for example. IE, starting with I, is, means in other words. So you have for example, in other words, completely different. But that's how I have to, you know, you have to come up with these tricks to remember all this stuff. But does that, that make sense to everybody? Okay, yeah, that's how, that's how I do it. Who else has a question? Yes, in the back. Is there uh, like maybe a rule of thumb or two that you could share real quickly about commas that we could? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> there are certain commas. And you're so right. Uh, commas. Uh, uh, I, have, I have a whole book that's coming out about commas called Comma Common Sense. But the problem with the book is that it cannot be condensed in, in just a, a short answer. Uh, is there like that, one thing that will fix like 60% of the problem? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, all right. Uh, this is going to be kind of a deep dive, and, and I'm going to try to, to, to do this and do this. Okay, here's the deal. A lot of times commas introduce what's called parenthetical information, which is information that's interesting but not necessary to the sentence. 
and the parenthetical information can be, if it's introduced, let's say, let's take the case of the parenthetical information being introduced inside the sentence. I'm going to give you an example. Okay, here we go. Let's go back to Susan in Huntsville. Okay, Susan in Huntsville, she has a husband. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, she did have a husband. I took that out. I have to, I have to strip these sentences down to the nub. Okay. Susan's a bit, oh, wait. Where's that? Uh, who has a pink sheet that they can give me really quick? Because I think there's, there's a good example. Thank you so much, Karen. All right, let's take a look at what I have. Oh, my goodness, 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 goodness. I want to keep on something that's on the Portland main stuff. Oh, and by the way, if anybody gets super geeky, I have some extra handouts for my Portland main board camp. Totally different sentences if you want to try your hand at them. So let me see if I can very quickly bend over. Oh my god, it's so long. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here it is. Okay. A wine enthusiast surely lives in Baltimore, Baltimore, Maryland. So this was the this was the, the sentence about the comma after Maryland. Shirley lives in Baltimore, Maryland, with her husband and two dogs. Now, originally, this sentence said her husband, Kyle, and two dogs. So I want you to imagine this. I know it's hard. It's really hard. But let's focus on her husband, Kyle, and two dogs. She has a husband. His name is Kyle. She has a husband. We don't really care about his name. So imagine that Kyle has to be in commas. Because you have, you can take out Kyle and still have a workable sentence. So the rule is, if you have a sentence and you have extraneous information, you've got to be able to pull it all out and still have a workable sentence. It has to work. So most of the time, if you have extraneous information in the middle of a sentence, you're going to need to have it enclosed in commas that can be removed and still have a workable sentence. So I took Kyle out of this sentence, and I still have a workable sentence because she has a husband, his, his name is Kyle. Now, it doesn't really work the other way because if you said she has, a, she, she lives with Kyle, her husband, and two dogs. So her husband actually is parenthetical information, so is Kyle. But you really can't make it so that she lives with Kyle and two dogs. What the heck? Who's Kyle? What, why is he in the sentence at all? So sometimes you have to use a judgment about the fact that Kyle is actually the extraneous information that can be yanked out of the sentence and nobody cares. So sorry about that. You know, I told you, commas, two hours, you can invite me back. All right. Who else has a question? I love this stuff. One minute. We got one minute. Okay, yes. Third thing. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to say that I can't think of it under this pressure. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, didn't mean to tease you. Didn't mean to tease you, and I'll think about it as soon as I walk out the door. So if anybody has a question, you're not gonna be able to sleep at night about that third thing about Sunny Collins, come on up and ask me because I'll know it right away. Which of your books would have that in it? All of them, sir. <laughs> All of them.